Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair. Let's see if we can complete the repair of this preheater. So we looked at this last week and basically we had a burnt out relay on here so we needed a relay. We checked out the other components and everything looks pretty much like it was okay. I didn't test the power supply but I wasn't too worried about that. This is just effectively taken out of a power pack, you know, the type of thing you plug in the wall. One thing that somebody commented on the previous video, you can see that they've actually cut off the original wires. You see the black and the black with the white stripe. These would have gone to the plug. Effectively, the low voltage coaxial plug. So they literally have taken these things out of a power pack or wall wart. So that's a 12 volt power supply. We figured that out. So if it's faulty, I'll just stick something else in there. Boss wasn't proven at all is why this was blowing fuses there's nothing in the problems i found that would explain that really this control board only has the 12 volt supply on it and it switches the live or neutral whatever to the heating element the heating element works we've tried that so there's no neutral if here this is live the neutral returns directly back to the power switch here this is the return from the heater so why is this blowing fuses i don't really know handy andy went up to the electronic shop or one of the two we have in the capital as palmas and they don't have these relays so i could go on aliexpress and try to find one that looks like that but i have another cunning plan yeah we can see this is a 12 volt relay it says 12 v there under the burnt rod that's how i know the power supply is 12 volts and on the previous video and also just by looking at this pcb you can see the relay coil goes to the 12 volts here and the other end goes to the collector this is a bipolar transistor it tests like a transistor and the emitter of this transistor if you look goes to ground which is the other output from the power supply plus and minus if you like okay so we basically know how it's connected up what i can do then because i can't find a relay like this is because there's a lot of space inside this thing is to put another relay in on the case somewhere just glue it down and then use that so i can connect wires from this board to the relay coil and i can connect the live wiring through the relay switch okay you can see that this symbol, this is the coil and this is the contact and this is a single pole double throw so it switches either to here or to here, this being the common switch terminal. But if you look underneath you'll see that this one isn't actually used. So the only contact is used is common and that one, okay, that switches the live coming in here to the element connecting there okay and if we look the terminal that is connected this one is the normally open so this transistor has to turn on to switch the heater on and then the controller switches the relay off when it wants to switch the heater off now it doesn't have to be that way it could be the other way so that the contact to the heater is normally closed that one when it's not energized so as soon as you power up the relay is connected to here normally closed the heater just comes on and when it gets up to temperature the chip turns the transistor on to switch the relay on which actually moves the contact there and switches the heater off okay so when you're looking at stuff like this bear in mind you can't assume that this transistor is turned on to turn the relay on to turn the heater on it could be the other way this could turn on to turn the relay on to turn the heater off just depending on where the heater is wired okay but we can see on ours it works in the way it turns the relay on to switch the heater on okay so we just need to find a relay, it doesn't need to be a changeover like this, it needs to have a normally open connection, 
that closes when the coil is energized. The coil is 12 volts, we can see that. And we can see that the relay contact says 10 amp, 20 amp. It's probably saying 10 amps at some DC voltage and 20 amps at some AC voltage probably means. So let's see what we've got. Well, I have a little box of relays here. Let's see what we have in here. We'll reject any that we obviously can't use. I'm not sure what that thing is, so we'll reject that. Uh, this one is a this is a 12 volt and this is normally open by the looks of it i'd have to just test that because you soon just do it but this only switches dc 14 volts so there's no point in doing it because we can't use that really there's this one here that's a 5 volt relay so that's no use to us a few more that's a 5 volt that's another 5 volt. We could modify it to switch the relay with 5 volts. It wouldn't be too difficult, but why bother? Because this is a 12 volt and it's 10 amp at 250 volt AC. We know the heater draws a couple of amps, maybe. It's a 450 watt. This has a coil and it has the switch contact here. And this shows normally open. So we could possibly use that one. Let's see what else we have. Well, that looks like another one the same. Okay, we have two of those. We have a couple more. These are smaller ones. Actually, one of these might actually fit on the board. This is 12 volts. Yeah. 20 amps at 125 AC, so we won't use that. This is a 120 volt one on the switch contact as well. So we won't use that either. What's this thing? Well, this is 12 volts, but it doesn't mention anything about the switch contacts. So we won't use that. And this one. Is, yeah, 12 amps, 250 volt. And I think this is possibly a 12 volt relay. 12DS, but I can't say for sure that it is actually, so we'll use the other ones, I think. Another thing we should check then, is the coil resistance similar to the one that's burnt up? Because if the coil resistance is much lower, then the switching transistor will be passing more current. If it's the same or higher, I don't think that would cause a problem at all, so let's check. I'm on ohms range as you can see, let's measure them, so this is the bad one, I'm pretty sure the coil itself is okay, we'll find out, I think the coil, I'm just guessing, because I can't see the symbol, but I'm pretty much sure the coil will be across these two terminals, let's see, yeah 239 ohms, what do I always read? Well, a bit higher, so that's fine, yeah. That just means the switching transistor will be drawing a bit less current. They're fine, so we can use either of those. Now then, are these here normally open? Yes, there's no contact between them. What I need to do now is just check this relay is good because it is a pull. So let's use our bench power supply to put 12 volts on it and see if it switches. Okay, so I have my bench power supply. I'll just switch it on. It's set to 12 volts. Well, let's see if we can hear the relay switch. I'm sure you can hear that quite clearly. I'll just switch it off again and connect the power. I'm going to do that because if you make like a momentary contact which breaks again, you may effectively get a back EMF voltage from the coil here, which can give you quite a zap. You might do that once or twice, but then you'll learn the lesson, okay? So power it on. Let's see if the contacts have closed. Yes, they have. It reads zero, but I'm just on normal ohms range, so... I can't say how good the contacts are, the condition. I can't see inside this one, but I can say it does switch, so it is a good relay. We need now to attach that to our PCB. 
It won't fit in if you look the legs are too narrow. You think maybe I can get one leg in and bend the one flat and solder it, but then the switch contact here is also in the wrong position, so it won't go in. So I'm just going to glue this down with a bit of uh, epoxy resin and then connect it to this. So that much we can do. Now let's just check that the 12 volt power supply is working and see whether the power trips out. I did notice as well, by the way, that the fuse holder is loose, so we'll just sort that out. I didn't check the fuse, so let's do that as well. Okay, so the fuse is visibly okay. Oh, something running around on my desk. This is one of the joys of living on a almost tropical island just above the Tropic of Cancer by a couple of degrees. Which, by the way, means this time of year the sun basically goes directly overhead. If you've never experienced that, then I can tell you now, it's ferocious. Okay, our UV index at the moment is 12. The UK 12 doesn't even exist on the UV index chart, okay. Fuse is good while we've witted about the weather. Very hot, by the way. Tomorrow, um, is 37 at least, but probably going over 40 in the daytime. Nighttime temperatures at the moment, minimum is 27 or thereabouts, 26, 27. We have a yellow warning for intense heat. But what we don't have is anybody saying, oh, it's hotter than Monaco or it's hotter than Jamaica. Yeah, I mean, we don't brag about it. It's just hot. <laughs> That's why the UK has such rubbish weather. Nobody likes people who brag, yeah, basically. So this is the power supply. This is the plug. Yeah, and this is also nasty so we're not going to use that we're going to take the wires off this we don't need to have this plug connected for the power to these power supply here you can see that directly goes there i did check for power or for shorts on the input previously but i realized later i didn't notice on the other video i might have had the power switch switched off when i did it. okay so i'm going to switch the power switch on Let's just check now for any shorts. So red and blue here go to the power supply so we can measure between red and blue. What have we got? Well, we have a very high resistance mega ohm, so there's no short on the input to this power supply. I'm fairly confident we can plug this in. I don't see any reason why we shouldn't but you never know okay one other thing from live to earth open from the neutral to earth open there's no shorts to ground either let's power this up and check whether the power supply is working so i'll put my meter leads in here i'm not really sure the polarity doesn't matter i will connect that onto volts let's get a power lead and let's see what happens because Handy Andy said this was tripping out the mains, I've connected it to my current limiting light bulb. I'll just make sure it's on limit. Yes, it is. So if there is a short or something like that, although I can't see it on the input to the power supply, the worst that should happen really is the light bulb will come on. Yeah, so um, I've done that. Switch is on. We'll power it up and let's see what happens with this one. Well, we have 12 volts, okay, I have the polarity the wrong way around, but doesn't matter. So, it's not blowing fuses, the power supply is working. That'll probably, yeah, go away after a little while the capacitor's discharging. I'll give that a couple of minutes before any high voltage disappears, before I get messing around with this. But in the meantime, let's have a look to see where we're going to fit our relay. Well, the controller board goes here, it's mounted purely by the potentiometer. Um, yeah, this goes in here. So I think we can probably put the relay just down to the side here somewhere. That should be fine there. And we can get our wiring where we want it. 
Um, I think I might stick it that way up because there's a lot of space in here, yeah. I think I might glue it that way. I'll put a heat shrink on the connections anyway, so especially the high voltage ones. Okay, so that can go there. This is quite handy because I no longer require the high voltage connections coming to this board. You see here, this is where the connector was burnt up, but I no longer need that. I only need to connect from the relay coils on it to the relay. And then the live, that's this one, coming in from the switch, the live can go direct to my relay. And then the other contact on the relay will go to the heating element and the heating element comes back to here. Okay, so we don't need this half of this connector. I'll just take this wire out of it. The mains lid is now unplugged, by the way. Don't just rely on the switch. Unplug the lid as well. Be sure with this sort of stuff, guys. You don't want to get a shock, really. So we can get this out of here, I think. It's a little bit welded in, probably, but I'm fairly sure I can get it out. If not, I'll just cut it off. Yeah, doesn't easily want to come out there, okay. These are old wire cutters, not good ones, okay. You can see they're bent on the end, so... I don't throw the old ones away. I keep them for this sort of job. See if we can get this off here. I'm sure we can. Okay, well, I've got the wire out of it. That's fine. Okay, so this part can now connect back on our board. This is the 12 volt supply, like so. Okay, and I just need to connect two pieces of wire to connect the relay coil. There we go. Not perfect that one, but can't touch anything. Okay, so that'll do for the PCB. We can now bolt this back onto the front of the unit. Okay, that's on there, bolted back on. That's all that supports this little PCB. I've connected this back up to 12 volts. I'm sure those contacts will be fine. Now we need to attach the relay and we need to solder the wires. Okay, that's stuck down with a super glue type thing. I can actually pick it up by the relay, so that's fine. I'll connect the wires and then let's see if this works. So the first ones we're going to connect to the two which go to the relay coil. Okay, there we go. Relay stuck. And the relay unstuck. <laughs> That's the glue obviously isn't very good stuff. I've soldered the wires, but this is not sticking well. I'll use some two-part epoxy resin instead. I'm not sure what that stuff is, but it obviously doesn't really stick properly. Yeah. We'll use a plan B glue. Seeing as I'm going to use this different adhesive, I'm actually going to put the relay a little bit further over that way so that the top will stand up because this wire is only a certain length that goes to the heater. Just make it a bit easier to work on in the future if we need to. Or even if we do need to do more work on it now, okay. So this is a two-part epoxy resin. It's fairly fast setting, but takes a little while, so let's uh, again put some onto the relay. And onto the case, we'll put this relay here instead. Okay. Okay. 
This glue is also fairly heat resistant as well, actually. Just need to get it to hold in place and it'll set. Okay, put it in a position where it wants to go naturally. There we go. Uh, uh, I'll put something on it like a bit of a weight to hold it down, yeah? It's almost like the simple things that prove to be the difficult things, okay? Take my little pair of uh, heavy pliers. Right, now it's going nowhere. Let's leave that for a little while. Okay, it's time to see if this works. I'll just reconnect the thermocouple. the hot plate back over the top okay okay I'll get the temperature meter and let's see what it does just stick this into here that's fine right So the first thing is, does it get warm? I'm now on direct mains. Plug it in, switched on, turn the temperature up a bit, let's see what it does. Well, I hear the click, that was a relay. And it's warming up. I've set it to 80 on the front I'm not sure how accurate this is but we can see we'll let that warm up and hopefully it'll stabilize it some temperature and we should hear the relay click as well oh yeah relay clicked it continues to warm up a little bit actually it is still warming up I'm sure I heard the relay Ah, and then the relay clicked again. So it's definitely regulating temperature. We can hear the relay clicking on and off. Yeah, I just did it again. So I think that's pretty much stabilized. Yeah. Definitely stabilise it. Stabilise at 60. It's set to 80 on the front, but I'm not sure this is so accurate. I can feel the warmth coming from it. We'll turn it up a bit. Yeah, you hear the relay click as soon as I turned it up. Temperature goes up. Yep, clicked again. I'm happy with that, guys. So, repair completed. I hope some of you enjoyed it. I hope you all enjoyed it, actually. But, you know, there's an example of how you can fix something when you've got salvage parts. Maybe not the correct part, but you can see we selected and tested the relay. We fitted it, and it's working just fine. Okay. One more save from the landfill, and I hope to see you all soon on another Lady Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.